Hello, girls. Uh, this is a um, this chapter on the introduction to cells. It's a rather long, lengthy chapter in PowerPoint, so I'll go, I'll go through it quickly to hit some of the high points, and then we'll discuss them a bit more in, in class. Um, whoa, what was that all? There we go. So, of course, all living things are made of cells. We know that, and um, they're quite small. You need some help to see them. At least with a light mic, you need at least a light microscope. And there are many ways to um, stain cells, and uh, we don't have to really worry about knowing these, but they're there for our information. We should just know a little bit about electron microscopes and how they're able to use um, these beams of electrons to get very detailed images of very small things. There's two types scanning, which gives you a look at the outside, a three dimensional look at something and transmission, which gives you a look at inside something. It's a view of a slice of something, or a cross-section. Cell fractionation is a technique to break cells apart to get at their individual parts. And you do this using a blender to grind up the cells. And then you spin them at various speeds. At low speeds, you get out larger materials and at higher and higher speeds you get out smaller and smaller things. At the highest speeds you can get out those ribosomes which are some of the smallest cell structures there are. Two types of cells, you're familiar with these I, I imagine, prokaryotes, eukaryotes. Prokaryotes being those relatively simple bacterial cells and eukaryotes being um, everything else basically. Of course there is the uh, the membrane, all cells have a membrane. Um, all cells have at least one chromosome and um, ribosomes. Now, um, prokaryotes uh, lack a nucleus. They do have DNA, but it's not in a nucleus. It's in a region called the nucleoid inside the cell. And you can see these little dots of the ribosomes. There's a cell membrane and also in many bacteria, a cell wall. These cells, are, of course, are very small. You can see they're only about a half a micron wide. <clears throat> a micron being one thousandth of a millimeter. We've got cell me uh, plasma membrane or cell membrane wall. Capsule is this um, sticky material that often surrounds uh, bacteria that helps hold them in place and protect them. They have extensions uh, that, again, help hold them down. Some of them have flagella that they use for moving. Eukaryotes, their cells are quite larger, and they again comprise everything else. Protists, fungi, plants, and animals. Now, as we'll talk about in class, their cells uh, generally can only be so large because when they start to get too large, there is too much volume relative to the surface area, and that makes it hard to get things in and out of the cell. Smaller things, smaller objects of the same shape, like this one here, have greater surface area relative to their volume. And we'll we'll see why that is and why that's important. The membrane, there's a whole chapter in the membrane coming up, but uh, we'll see it's pretty important. Phospholipid bilayer with many embedded proteins <clears throat> that have lots of different jobs for transport, communication, etc. for the cell. All right. Lots of internal membranes we'll see inside of eukaryotic cells that uh, add complexity and have various jobs. Typical animal cell, uh, we'll talk about each of these individually, but again, all these internal membranes, the nuclear membrane, endoplasmic reticulum, the Golgi, um, and of course, uh, mitochondria here in the case of the animal, these uh, powerhouses of the cell as they're called. Again, lots of ribosomes. Um, here um, with the centrosome involved with producing microtubules for cell division. And in the case of some animal cells, a flagella. Plant cells, how are they different? You can see they have some things that animal cells don't have. Chloroplast, a large central vacuole. Cell wall and plasma does model these connections between cells. Of course, we have a nucleus in eukaryotic cells where the DNA is housed. The DNA remains there, doesn't leave. Um, in 
your typical cell, the DNA is rather diffuse in what we call chromatin. Uh, when, as we'll see later, when a cell is going to divide those chromosomes, that DNA condenses into what we identify as chromosomes. Nucleolus, where you have RNA being made, and you can see some openings um, in the cell or in the nuclear membrane and a connection to the endoplasmic reticulum. We'll see why those are important. Ribosomes, protein synthesis, consisting largely of RNA, but also some proteins, too large, too small. Uh, I'm sorry, there's a large and a small subunit. There can be free ribosomes and ribosomes that are attached to the endoplasmic reticulum, again, involved with protein synthesis. All right, the endomembrane system, that internal membrane system, including the endoplasmic reticulum, which again is connected to the nucleus and often has uh, ribosomes attached. This is where we're going to produce a lot of proteins, for example. You have, and that's called the rough ER, the stuff that has ribosomes on it. You also have the, the smooth ER, and you can see the smooth ER has many jobs of making lipids, um, processing carbohydrates, storage, and detoxifying, etc. Again, the rough ER's primary job is to produce proteins and then package up those proteins in the transport vessels for movement around the cells. Next in the endomembrane system, the Golgi apparatus that receives those uh, transport vesicles from the ER. And their job is to modify those proteins and sort of get them ready to go. And so these transport proteins sort of fuse with the Golgi. The protein is inside the Golgi now and it's being again modified. Sometimes you're putting different subunits to, uh, together for example. And then those finished proteins drop, come off the other end, what is known as the transface of the Golgi, into a little transport vesicle and that protein is taken where it is needed either inside the cell or for release outside the cell. A lysosome is a particular membrane um, bound organelle that contains digestive enzymes. It would have come off of the Golgi and again when you have one that contains these digestive or hydrolytic enzymes they're known as a lysosome. And so these lysosomes are involved with again digesting things. So here in this cell is taken in a food vacuole, the lysosome fuses with it and then those digestive enzymes digest the food. These um, lysosomes can also be involved with autophagy or basically breaking down old cellular components that need to be recycled, you might say, like this mitochondrion here. All right, vacuoles are um, membrane-bound structures that are relatively large. For example, we already just saw a food vacuole. In some organisms like paramecia, you have contractile vacuoles, whose job is to pump out excess water. And then in plants, you have this very large central vacuole, which is where a lot of water is stored, sometimes pigments, um, sometimes waste materials, often takes up a large volume of the plant cell. All right, and there's again the endomembrane system there, the ER, Golgi, these transport vesicles, and, um, and our transport vesicles, and then vacuoles. Mitochondria, it, you're familiar that they are the sites of respiration. We'll have a whole chapter on cellular respiration, and then the chloroplasts are involved with photosynthesis. And just about all eukaryotic cells have mitochondria. This outer membrane and an inner membrane with these folds, these folds known as the cristae. And then you have the matrix inside there. Notice that mitochondria have their own ribosomes involved with producing proteins that are needed for cellular respiration. And as we'll reiterate in the genetics chapter, we'll see that mitochondria also have a little bit of their own DNA. <coughs> Chloroplasts containing the photosynthetic pigments, including chlorophyll, the primary photosynthetic pigment. A couple outer membranes and then the inner thylakoid membrane. And quite a complex internal structure there, giving lots of surface area, providing lots of space for the photosynthetic reactions. Okay, I'm going to end here, and we're going to have to do a second video for this chapter, this lengthy chapter. Thanks.